Hi everybody and welcome back to the Ken's Log channel. Today I'm going to go through and show you how I clean a Sega Master System when I get it. Um, I actually have the Master System 2 and the Master System 1. So I'll be able to show you how to uh, clean both those systems at the same time. Uh, the materials you're going to need, obviously, spray canned air. Uh, something to clean with. Wipes, uh, wet washcloth, something along those lines. Um, alcohol always important when you're cleaning electronics and a uh, screwdriver the Phillips in this case you need a long one because uh, if you have a short set like I do uh, the master system too you can't get the uh, <clears throat> can't get the uh, screws out unless you have that and then also some paper towels or uh, napkins or whatever just for cleanup um, but let's get started pretty basic on uh, the disassembly of these uh, you turn both of them over and you got just regular Phillips screws on each of them, four or five on this guy, one, two, three, four, five, and six on this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six. So go ahead and take off your screws and come back. Now that you have your uh, Master System 2 uh, five screws taken out, you should lift the top right off. It's going to be connected here and there, but once those are disconnected, just go ahead and take the top right off. Okay, now that you have your top off, it's very easy to remove the reset button. You can just squeeze those two things, push it out, and that's off. And then uh, the power off and on button looks like it's held in by uh, clips. So just lift the clips, push the one side out, and then the clips on the other side. Like that. Just be careful not to break any of those clips. Uh, it'll come out. You just got to kind of do one side and then hold it and then uh, pull the other side and then it'll come out. Okay, now that you have the power button off, uh, it's up to you if you want to take this uh, this dust cover off. It's uh, it's kind of a pain and uh, you could break your, uh, your system. Uh, you could break any parts of these, but if you really want to take it off, here's how you do it. Um, it's probably best just to do it with your hands. What you have to do is there's a little lip here that catches and you have to get that underneath the plastic. So you have to push down on that piece until it's under, just like that, okay? You roll it here. And then there's nothing connecting, it's just a piece of plastic, hinged plastic, and then you just pull it out to the sides a little bit and pull it out, uh, and that piece is separated and can be cleaned. Uh, there is no metal on the top here, uh, and there's no circuitry or anything like that, so you can just take that over to the sink and wash it, and that's, uh, that's along with all this other stuff. Um, but let's get to the control panel. Okay, now that we're here, you want to remove the seven screws and uh, remember the size of the screws and what they look like uh, and come right back. Okay, now that you have your seven screws removed, you can go ahead and remove the top uh, plate. And that can actually go in the dishwasher and be washed too, so set that with the dishwasher. I uh, just want to make sure and dry that part really quick. All right, now that you have that removed, there's two screws here that you have to remove. One on this side. Let's take a picture. Okay, now that those three screws are removed, go ahead and pull your board out. It's going to have a plate on the underneath. Along with it, you got to kind of pull it out even. So maybe put a finger right there, and then one right there. Pull up on this side. Same time, just like so. Okay. This has no metal or electronics or anything, so that goes in the dish pile. Okay, you can go ahead and take off this bottom plate. Um, probably the best spot. Push this off, just hold this edge right here. Okay. More dishes. Make sure and dry it right away. Um, 
but then uh, we got your board here. Go ahead and lay out a paper towel or napkin or whatever. Just want to pick up anything from the table there. Before we start, uh, now that you have your board in, off, and uh, you know everything looks pretty clean here. It's got some dust here and there. I don't really like putting uh, water or even alcohol on these boards, but if you're going to use something, use alcohol. So if you have, you know, soda pop or some sort of dirt buildup here. Uh, let's go ahead and hit it with uh, the spray can first, okay? And especially concentrating on the pins. When we get any dust out of there, we can. Really concentrate on the power button here. Get any dust you can out of there. And then your, uh, your controller port. Side. Hopefully, shouldn't have anything on it. But if it does, give it a good spray. Okay. Now, grab a uh, Q-tip, get it, uh, get some alcohol on it, and uh, just concentrate on the dirt. You don't, uh, you know, if it looks clean, it's probably clean. Um, and these were working before. I just want to make sure they're clean. Like it's around here, there's some dust. Pretty much where the you know the pins connect. You know, there's always going to be some sort of uh, stuff down there. So just get it all cleaned out best you can. And I noticed over here there's a little bit. Okay, power button a little bit more. You know, because those are the, the things that are exposed to the environment on a constant basis. And then uh, to clean your controller ports, the same way on the outside of them. See this? Okay. Same with the underside. Okay, but uh, if you're going to clean the actual prongs, the pins, in here, you want to get a new Q-tip, put some alcohol on it, just go in there, try not to get any of the cotton in there, and don't bend the pins, don't push so hard that it bends the pins, um, but you should be able to get most of the dust out of there on the edge. And it's going to have a little bit of cotton residue left over, so hopefully the canned air can just blow that right out. Pull off what you can. set aside and dry. Uh, it's pretty much dry now since you use alcohol, but uh, uh, one thing I want to point out, some people will be taking this apart to, uh, because it's not working, and most likely you have dust in here. Uh, and what I do in that, or I'll just do it real quick, um, probably it's a good idea to do anyway. Just get your Q-tip as wet as possible, and just move it right along those pins. Just get those pins wet, okay? Like, oh my god, what's this guy doing? Get them wet in there. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to force that alcohol to come out. Um, you know, you might want to wear safety glasses because you have it so wet. But just dry it out as soon as you can. See how easy I was with the board putting it up and down because you have pins on the back side that you do not want to bend. 
you know, you don't want them to touch uh, each other or the board itself. Um, but uh, you just want to be careful. You're just gently putting it down, that'll do it. So you're done with that part. Go ahead and set that aside. And then go wash the rest of your parts, you know, both of your, uh, <coughs> your shields, the, uh, the hinge, the top, and the bottom. And the uh, power and reset button, or pause button, I guess is what they used to call them. Uh, go ahead and take those over to your dishwasher, use Dawn. On the, um, on the bottom, make sure to get in here really good. But when you're doing this part, these labels will come off with water. So with the bottom, you may want to actually just do this bottom by hand. You know, do this in the sink, um, but, but keep this dry because the, these labels are sensitive on the, on the two. Um, like this one's already starting. So just keep that in mind. If you don't care about the labels, then just scrub the hell out of it. But uh, these labels will come off if they're exposed to water. Just an FYI. Okay, now that you have everything clean, go ahead and uh, lay everything kind of spread out on a, a dry towel. Uh, not one that you use during the cleaning process, something really dry to kind of draw the moisture out of the, uh, the systems themselves. Uh, hand dry everything, especially these metal parts, because they will rust on you. Um, if you just leave water on them overnight. But what I do, hand dry all of them and then I wait 24 hours before I put it back together or the next day, you know, the next morning. And then I'll put them all back together. Or you could uh, uh, dry them all by hand and then uh, just go into every little corner, make sure all the wetness is out because you don't want to put this together with water still in it. And the most uh, hidden spots for water are your screw holes, you know, I'm just, I have an example right there. See all the water that came out of that one? Anyway, just take your uh, air gun and knock out all that water out of all them holes, and then you got to re-wipe it out. But I just prefer to, uh, unless it's on metal, just let it sit and dry. And we're going to have a warm day today, so it'll get nice and dry. But uh, either dry them all up and... Uh, uh, and let them set out for 24 hours or dry them all up and just go through them and get them dry but be sure to put this face down or the the holes face down so gravity kind of drops that water out of there okay and uh, once it's dry come on back and I will show you how to reassemble these guys okay everybody now that you have uh, cleaned and dried all of your components the very next step I want you to do is I want you to take your can of air okay this is pretty important I want you to verify there's no more water left in any of these holes. These little holes right here that don't, you know, protrude out anywhere. Just spray in there. Just make sure no water comes out. Oh, see, right there. Just a little drop came out. And that's just, that's enough to screw your stuff up bad. So you don't want to do that. Uh, so just go through each one. Make sure there's nothing there. And do that on all of them. The top, you know, do all those. And then, uh, remember the pause button? That's got a big hole in it too. Make sure to do that one too. And then you have your power button. That's got a hole in it. That had a little tiny bit of water left on it. Probably because I left it on its side maybe. But uh, yeah, make sure that, that the water's out of it. Okay. For the Sega Master System 2. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the bottom again. Blow out all these holes, make sure there's no uh, water in them. And uh, I've already done it on this one actually. But uh, if you're just watching this part, just take your air and get all those holes. And it will push the uh, water right out. So. All right, first things first, you go ahead and put in your bottom strap, your bottom um, shield. And this just lines up hole, hole, line, hole, hole, line. Okay, just like that, and then your circuit board lines right up with the, uh, the control ports here, and then your uh, your pins. Oops, your pins always go on top of this uh, piece of hard plastic, you know, because you're going to shove your games down in there. Uh, so it's kind of got to go in like this for the uh, controller deck. Okay. All right, 
and then you'll see it slotted on two pieces, or I guess three on this one. Hmm, I didn't think there'd be one there. But one, two, three. It's set up on. Go ahead and replace these two black screws. screw over here to replace. Remember it was a little guy. Okay, okay once that's done you can go ahead and put your cover back on. Try to put it on back. They should just fall into place, line up on the little plastic tabs here, here, and here. This is not one there, there should be for sure. Uh, and then go ahead and replace the one, two, three, four, five, six screws. this to the side go ahead and grab your top side bring it over and we're going to replace this first go ahead and set it on there just like this get it around those knobs and then just slowly move it back into its spot back here You have your top go ahead and uh, put the master system label on just like this the, the clear master system you want to put it on this one and then go ahead and flex it over that other side and it's just the opposite of how you took it off you're gonna have to bend you're gonna have to bend this up in order to push this through okay so go ahead and pull up on this this part right here and then push this through okay like normal. All right, make sure it's all the way on there and it is on both of these. Let's go ahead and replace your power switches, your pause and power. Make sure pause is facing north and south. Put it back in there. And then your off and on switch just falls right in. Oh no, this is a little bit more difficult. We have to do it from the other side, I remember now. So what you do is uh, you have to just put this back on and there's no wording and it's the same back both ways. And there's four clips that you just need to snap it into. Just like that. What? Go ahead and snap it in past those four posts and just remember where your your power is see we want it all the way to the left so it's on off and this is on off this is on off okay and then it's got two little lips right here so you got to put it in front first and then down okay and that should slide together if not you put it together wrong but if you follow these instructions it should slide right on 
go ahead and flip it over, replace your five screws, and you're done. Uh, that is my tutorial on how to clean, assemble, disassemble, and assemble your Sega Master System 1 or 2. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like our channel, uh, subscribe. And if you ever need a retro game or a movie or something, we have an Amazon store. You can support us that way. Uh, it was great making this video, and I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much, and have a great day.